So in 9.4, we've been working a lot on performance, in particular, performance of 2D map services like this one. What this means is that you'll be able to uh, publish your 2D service once and consume it in 2D and 3D and have it being really fast in both views. Another performance improvement is specifically for textured objects, such as these buildings from Pictometry and Precision Lightworks. The quality of the buildings automatically adjust based on my view distance, which really helps with my interactive performance. A new symbology option in 9.4 is setting symbol size based on an attribute. Each of our street lamps has an attribute saying how bright the light is, and we can use that to very quickly get a feel for how well lit our city streets are. Now that we've seen some performance and symbology options uh, that we've improved in 9.4, let's switch gears to a more traditional thematic view of the city of Philadelphia. Let's talk about 3D data maintenance. So new in 9.4 is the ability to start editing in 3D. This gives us the same template editing experience that Doug showed earlier. So I can place a subway exit point directly onto the view and then connect that to my street network with a transition line and snapping. Now, because I'm in 3D, I can go below ground and connect my above ground network to my below ground network, again, using snapping. So just one example of how uh, the benefits of being able to edit your data in 3D. Another common edit in a city is adding new or proposed buildings. And in 9.4, we have a new insert tool for multi-patches. This allows me to import and geo-reference a 3D model like the SketchUp model with a single click. And once it's in the database as a multi-patch feature, I can continue to make edits, such as rotate it and move it, and of course, set feature attributes, such as the contact name and the submission date. Now, even though I've already set the geometry for this model once or for this multi-patch feature, in 9.4, it's very easy to update it with a new model without losing my feature attributes. Now that we've finished editing our building, let's have a look at the impact this building might have on our city, in particular, existing views of the nearby Logan Square. In 9.4, we've expanded the line of sight tool, so it not only takes into account the surface, and the line of sight lines, but also takes in multi-patch layers, such as our proposed buildings. If we highlight the blocked views, it's very easy to identify which people are going to lose their views and might object to this construction. Let's come down and have a look at one last analysis result from a new tool called Skyline. Many cities, such as Hong Kong and others, have skylines or viewpoints of the city that they want to protect. And in 9.4, we have this tool which helps make that analysis possible. For example, we can see this proposed building will not change the Philadelphia skyline from this location. The analysis tools I've shown here are just representative of the improvements we've made to 3D vector analysis in 9.4. Thanks. Oh. Let's come back to another 3D view and look at a new layer type, video layers. What we're looking at here is some analysis results for the 1906 earthquake up in San Francisco. And if we come in to the globe, we can see that it's draped on the surface. We can set some layer transparency, zoom back up, and we can see our GIS data underneath the video. So this is an example of a geo-reference video. Another way to locate a video is if you know the camera's position and its view direction, such with a security camera or with persistent surveillance, a UAV. If we come down to this facility, we have a point feature for our security camera, 
we can synchronize that in with a video layer and start to get some context for our security camera coverage. So to summarize, we see 3D as an integral part of GIS. And in 9.4, we've made great improvements on the display, analysis, and maintenance of 3D GIS data.